welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Jamie and I make cleaning and organizing videos and military content every Sunday and Wednesday. If you're new here and those topics interest you, please subscribe down below. And if you like this video or get anything from it, please hit that like button. And if you end up having questions throughout the video, of course, leave them in the comments below. I respond to everything. This is going to be things you need to know before PCSing to Germany part two. Where will I live? So housing policies are different in every region, but in Bavaria, in USAG Bavaria, 99 times out of 100, you will live in government leased housing. It is Bavaria's policy. They have enough housing. Living off post and paying German utilities and German bills is a lot and they don't offer it to you unless you have rare circumstances. And I don't even know what those would be, but if you have rare or unusual circumstances and you think that's you, I would start the process of emailing housing and finding out, but otherwise that would come with the expectation that you're going to live in government based housing. And that does not mean that you will have to live on base. In fact, in the Grafenvier Vilsack area, most of, well, most, I'm gonna say half, I don't actually know. A lot, okay, I'll say a lot. <laughs> a lot of the housing is in communities off base. There will be little clusters of like three or five or 10 or 30 or like Netzelberg in Grafenmeer, hundreds of American house houses. Well, they're still German houses, but you know what I mean? Tons of American families living together, but on the economy. They're not locked behind gates. They're not on post. They're out in Germany, like myself and my family. We live in the town of Vilsack. So we live outside the military base in a little village. If you would like to check out Vilsack, I have a tour of the city of Vilsack that I can link up above. And I have a tour of the inside of my home that I can also link up above. And obviously they're not all encompassing. It might not be where you live. It might not be the town that you're PCSing to, but it is a pretty good idea of what most of the towns in Germany look like. Most of them are small and most of them do look like Vilsack. A lot of the housing that they put Americans in do look like my house as far as the layouts and the size and the quality of the kitchens and the floors and the stairs and all the things that you're gonna be like, hmm, that doesn't look American. That's what your house is gonna look like. So yes, do not plan to get BAH or what is referred to overseas as OHA and then like pocketing some of the money. Do not plan for that. It's very unlikely. You, your OHA does not come into your paycheck and get taken out. I've never lived on a military base in the States, so I'm not sure how that works per like what comes in and out of your paycheck, but over here on your spouses or on the um, service members paycheck, you are not going to see that money. You're just simply going to be given a home, sign some contracts, and then when you move out, you move out and your BAH will start again when you go to the States. Number seven. You do not need to change your bank. So I know military families have great success with Navy Federal and USAA, and if you have those banks, that's great, keep them. If you have like a local bank that doesn't have like great online banking, I might switch to USAA or Navy Federal or a larger bank, but for my family, our um, family bank account is Wells Fargo, and that's what we've kept, and that's what we've used here. But you do need a, another bank account once you arrive in Germany. You need a bank with a European routing number. Now there are two options on base. There's Service Credit Union and Community Bank. Right? That's all it's called? Ooh. There's Service Credit Union and Community Bank, owned by U.S. Bank. I think that makes a difference to you. Doesn't make a difference to me, don't care. Um, both are great. I actually have a bank account with both of them for a long roundabout reason. Um, Service Credit Union is great because I think their mobile banking is easier and it's easier to deposit money and just pull up the app, take a picture of a check I've written to myself and bam, there's money in my Service Credit Union. Um, community bank, I think you have to either deposit at the ATM or deposit inside the bank. Um, but community bank is also great. I use their ATMs over service credit union no matter what debit card I'm using. I use community bank's ATMs because they don't charge you an additional fee. Obviously your bank might charge you a fee. Wells Fargo charges me my, 
Wells Fargo charges me a fee to use another bank, but they will refund it when I move when I move back to the states. They'll refund so many so many international transactions a year and so many ATMs a year. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Check it out with your bank or don't, whichever. Um, but what am I getting at? Community bank doesn't charge you an additional fee for pulling out euros. They do charge you the conversion rate, yes, but they don't charge you that $3 because you're not using your community bank card. So I can take my main bank card, my Wells Fargo card, stick it in a community bank ATM and there's no additional fees at the ATM. I hope that makes sense. So that's where I go to pull out euros unless I'm already like out and about in Germany, then I can just, you can just go to a German bank or a German ATM and pull out euros. There's obviously fees and there's um, conversion rates and stuff like that, but that's unavoidable. Some people say conversion rates are better on the economy than they are on post. I found that to be like a little bit true, but conversion rates are not this like huge astronomical number. I mean, I'm sure if I looked up every conversion rate I've ever been charged in the three years that I've lived here, I'm sure it adds up to a few hundred dollars, but there's nothing I can do about, there's nothing that I can do to avoid the fact that I earn US dollars and I need to pay for things in euros. There's no avoiding that. So just like get over that like idea. But yes, you do need a bank because even though you live on post and you don't pay for you, utilities or rent, you still will have some bills for us. Our bills are um, Wi-Fi, internet, we pay to a German company and our cell phones we pay to a German company. So we need to be able to have a German routing number from our bank to electronically take those bills out. That doesn't need to be your main bank unless you want it to be. We have allotments set up that you can set up through your own bank if you want to. We set our allotments up through MyPay and they and DFAS and it comes right out of my husband's check every month. A certain amount goes into our community bank and a certain amount goes into our service credit union to pay those bills. And that's that's worked out just fine for us. Number eight, oh, cell phones. Now this is also a highly debated topic among the American community. I know it's comforting to keep your American cell phone and your American cell phone plan. Um, I know a lot of people who switch to T-Mobile in the States and use the international plan over here, but I have read some people have problems using that long-term because it's not a plan that's meant to be used long-term. And then some people have done it flawlessly for the entire three years that they're here and they say that it's no big deal and that's what they prefer. Um, cell phone plans overall, in my opinion, are cheaper in Germany though. So if you can and want to, I would switch to a German cell phone plan because you're gonna save money. In America, we had Sprint. Sprint has really great military customer service and really great policies, and I'm sure that Verizon is similar, and I'm sure T-Mobile is even similar. And by law, they have to allow you to cancel or suspend your account if you have orders overseas. So that's a non-issue. That's easy peasy. You can cancel or suspend your account with anyone in the US and that goes for almost anything. There's laws to protect you if you are being sent overseas on military orders. But from my experience, Sprint is super helpful. They have a military customer service line. You give them orders, they suspend your line. They unlocked our iPhones so that we could take out our American SIM card and put in a German SIM card and it's not a problem. If you don't unlock your American phones from your service provider, you won't be able to put in a German SIM card. So make sure that they're unlocked. If you go to your cell phone provider, they will know exactly what you're talking about. So yes, Sprint unlocked our iPhones, we brought them overseas and we got a cell phone plan in Germany, popped in our new SIM cards and voila, we're using our American iPhones, no problem. We've even bought new iPhones in the States, again, no problem. And we did not cancel our plan with Sprint, we suspended it and um, that's simply because I didn't wanna lose my American phone number, I've had it my entire life as long as I've had a cell phone number, that's been my cell phone number, so I'm a little bit attached to it. I wanna be able to keep using it when we get back to the States. And um, because I'm also part-time in the Army, sometimes I have to do training, I have to go back to the States, I've had to go home for a wedding, we went home for Christmas one year, and we wanted to be able to turn back on our cell phones, obviously, no big deal. We called up Sprint, said we're visiting home. They reinitiated our lines and then they just suspended them again when we got back to Germany. 
easy peasy one phone call no big deal so that's why we suspended as a to canceling so there's a few different companies that americans use for their cell phones i know there's like four or five that people i've heard people use but primarily american military uses tks also referred to as vodafone or telecom which is um t-mobile's german version of t-mobile no association directly with American T-Mobile. So if you have American T-Mobile, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so you pick between T-Mobile and TKS usually because they're both provided on post. They have American customer service. Like it's super easy. Um, we picked TKS and a lot of people pick TKS primarily because they don't lock you into a contract. It's a month to month contract. So once it's time to PCS, it's easy to get out of the contract. Um, all of the cell phone providers in Europe usually cover all of the EU or even all of Europe. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, what if I hop over to France? Your phone's going to work there. It's not going to be extra charges. I don't know why people pick T-Mobile for their cell phones other than maybe that's what they picked for their internet. But we picked TKS because there was no contract. And when you're military, less contracts, the better, because you know you're not saying. So that leads me into number nine of things you want to know before PCSing to Germany, and that is home internet. And you choose between the same two companies, T-Mobile or TKS. And for the same reason, a lot of people choose TKS because you're not locked into a contract. Um, we chose T-Mobile. I know we chose TKS for our cell phones and T-Mobile for our internet. And the reason we chose T-Mobile for our internet is we asked our neighbors where we live, what internet they have, and if they've had any issues and they all had T-Mobile and T-Mobile could just get to us faster. We'd waited weeks to get a house. And then once we moved into our house, it was like 40 some days for TKS to come set up our router and turn on our internet and T-Mobile could do it in 30. And I'm not saying 30 days is good, but 30 days was better than 40 and the prices were similar and the speeds of the internet were almost identical. So we just went with T-Mobile. T-Mobile does tie you into a three-year contract and the only way to break a contract is to give them a three-month notice with orders. And a three-month notice with orders is no exception. If you get your orders only 20 days out, you're still paying for those extra two months. So T-Mobile is a little bit difficult with customer service that way. There's obviously no laws to protect US military with orders. So them like letting you break the three year contract within three months is about as good as it gets. Um, and I've also heard people have problems once they leave, even T-Mobile charging them past that three months. I've just heard a lot of complicated things with T-Mobile overcharging, recharging, continuing to charge. So if you can avoid T-Mobile, I probably would, but we've got T-Mobile, it's done fine so far, and we haven't left, so I can't tell you my experience there, but so far so good, and we'll cancel as soon as we can, and it's just something I'm going to have to stay on top of because I'm aware of it. Um, so yeah, the 30 days, the 40 days, that sounds crazy to an American, but that's pretty normal, and we moved years before COVID was even a thing, so I don't know if it's even longer or they have a different procedure now moving in during the pandemic, but yeah, takes a while for internet. You will get quoted slow speeds almost anywhere in the Vilsack Grafenbeer area. Um, it's just not a high priority Wi-Fi speeds or like the quickness of customer service in Germany in my experience. And it's just something you get used to. It's a little frustrating when you first get here, but you just adapt. And even though we are quoted to have really low speeds of Wi-Fi, we don't have any problems. My husband will occasionally play Xbox Live. I can be on my cell phone. I can watch Netflix. I can do, we can do almost anything simultaneously with cell phones, tablets, computers, TV, all using the internet at the same time. And we don't have any issues. The only time I even notice my internet is slow is when I'm uploading a YouTube video. It takes hours, but that's the only time that it's really ever affected us or we've noticed so i wouldn't worry about that and if you do end up getting housing on post tks is your only option for wi-fi if you live on the military base so it's like a non-issue you choose tks for your wi-fi then you probably choose tks for your cell phone don't overthink it there's only a couple of options and sometimes there's no options but if you do live on post and you get tks your internet and router is already set up. You just need to turn it on. So it's a much quicker process if you live on post. So that's a bonus. The 10th thing you should know before PCSing is how your mail is going to work. So you 
when you PCS to Germany, you're going to have two addresses. You're going to have your APO address and your German address. People get really confused. Where should I ship packages? I'm on Amazon, but I'm on the German Amazon. Do I send it here? Do I send it here? It's really not confusing. I don't know why people are confused, but let me explain it to you. Your APO is like your PO box and it's your American PO box. So when you go to online shop or your family is sending you a letter or a package, the mail brings it all to a warehouse, an American warehouse. So you're shipping to America and then the military takes those things and ships it overseas. Now, if your family sends you a package, it's still gotta go through customs. So they still need to fill out a customs slip, but there's no additional fees. They don't need to write on the package anywhere that they're shipping it to Germany. They're just gonna put your APO address and you're gonna get all of this information when you in process, you're gonna get your address given to you. And so APO, just think of that as your American PO box. It's coming to you, American. It's the American Postal Service. US Postal Service is what's shipping to your APO. And then you're gonna have your German address. Whether you live on post or off post, you're going to have a German address. Now that's for anything you wanna send through the mail on the German economy. So there's Amazon in Germany still, and it's Amazon DE, so that's German. So you're gonna to wanna to ship it to your German address, not your APO, that's your US Postal Service address, your German address to your physical house. Whether you live on post or off post, you're going to have a physical address that you're going to be able to ship things to. I know buying bigger things and sh buying through random companies that do their own delivery, sometimes it's like another step to get them to come on post. Sometimes you have to go sign them in if you live on post. But if you end up living off post like I do, your stuff's just gonna come to your home like it would come to your home anywhere. And yeah, so I hope that's not confusing. A German address and an APO address. As far as like bills and like forwarding your address, I would forward everything to your PO box. I would forward your American address in the States to your American address here, so your APO. So all of my bills, all of my, anything that's coming from the States, from companies, from the postal service, everything I forward to my APO address and if you've never forwarded an address it's really easy just google it and then you can pick your dates and if you live in Texas right now all of your mail on a certain date will start getting forwarded to your PO box once you have it or if you don't have your PO box yet you can forward it to your family and then your, you can forward your family's address to your PO box. It sounds complicated, it's all really simple. And then those addresses will automatically get changed in the system. So the mail, mail service and all those companies will now know your new address. If you guys have more questions or more topics you would like me to cover, I'd love to do a part two. So just hit me with your ideas down below. Um, we are in a sort of in a lockdown right now so i would like to do some tours around some nearby towns and go into some shops and do a grocery store tour of the different grocery stores in the area so as soon as this lockdown lets up i'm gonna film those for you um my next video about pcsing to germany or about americans in germany is going to be a list of things you should and should not bring when PCSing to Germany so look for that coming soon and if you enjoyed this video again give it a thumbs up and of course I'll answer all your questions down below if you'd like to see what it's like to travel in Europe pre-pandemic check out our vlog channel that I've linked below and yeah thanks for watching see you in my next one